Make a snack. Building a blue fruit controlled necktie using Adafruit Flora, Flora Blue Fruit LE, and Arduino code. You can build an app controlled smart tie and you can adopt the wiring scheme in the code to power skirts, scarves, hats, and other garments. Launch the free Blue Fruit app and select the Adafruit device. Use the color picker to choose the lights for your tie. And use the gamepad to run pre programmed animations like flashes, rainbow lights, and a Cylon chaser. And if you're familiar with Arduino code, you can program your own animations too. Now the brain in your smart tie is going to be the Adafruit Flora. It's Arduino compatible. And in order to make the tie Bluetooth controllable, we're going to use the Flora wearable Bluetooth LE module. If you don't have a micro USB cable, you'll need one of those as well. And make sure it's a data cable, not just power. Now the lights in the tie should be Flora RGB Smart Neo Pixels. They're sold in packs of four. I have six in my tie, so just buy two packs. You've got a bunch of different options for power. You could use one of these three AAA battery holders, or if you're familiar and comfortable with the risks of LiPo, you could use a 3.7 volt 500 milliamp battery. But if you use one of these rechargeables, like I'm showing here, you'll also want to purchase a USB charger for the LiPo. Now I used a necktie and I found this great circuit board tie at Amazon, but you can use really any garment if you want. You can use a skirt, a hat. You'll also want some plastic grommets. I recommend plastic over metal because you don't want to risk a short. And E6000 glue tends to be the favorite among electronics folks, and you'll need a needle and thread too. Now, if you've done electronics projects before, you probably got all this stuff already, but I'd suggest 22 gauge wire. It's nice and flexible for the inside of your tie. You'll need a soldering iron and some solder, wire strippers, and a pair of scissors. Let's start off by wiring up the Flora to the Blue Fruit module. You'll want to connect the 3.3 volt pad on the Flora to the 3.3 volt pad on the Blue Fruit LE module. The RX on the Flora goes to the TX on the Blue Fruit, and the TX on the Flora goes to the RX on the Blue Fruit. And you'll want to connect ground to ground. You don't need to plug in the battery at this point. You want to make sure that it's charged up, but this is where it goes right into the JST jack. And you want to make sure that you use a battery that's about 500 milliamps. You don't want to go any larger than that. Now's a good time to quickly test everything. If you don't have it already, you'll want to download the Arduino software at Arduino CC, select Software, Downloads, and choose the version appropriate for your computer. Once downloaded, you can drag it into your Applications folder and put it in the dock. Now, if you're new to all this, you can go to the Adafruit Flora Bluefruit LE page, and there's some detailed instructions. You'll definitely want to download the latest libraries from GitHub. I renamed mine to get rid of master at the end and then just drag this whole folder here into your Arduino libraries folder. And if you're using a Mac, that's probably in your documents folder inside of a folder called Arduino and there's libraries. Now we're going to get the sketch or the Arduino program that controls the tie. So in order to do that, go to github.com slash Gallagher. My last name is spelled like Gal Laugh, or there's a U in there, slash app tie. And on this page, find the green cloner download button, click that, and then click download zip. Now once you download the zip, decompress it, you can get rid of the old zip file. I get rid of the master at the end of the apptie folder, and you want to drag that folder inside of your Arduino folder on a Mac that's inside of your documents folder. And once you've got the folder copied over, you can double click on apptie.ino to load it up inside of the Arduino IDE. Now if you've never used Flora before, Adafruit has got a great page on getting started with Flora. You're definitely going to want to go through these steps if this is the, your first time using it. You want to make sure in the download software section, there's a click to the Arduino setup guide. Um, we've already downloaded the latest version of the I Arduino IDE, but we also want to make sure that we can communicate with the Adafruit boards. So if you go down here, uh, this says add uh, Adafruit board support package. So I've just copied this URL that you see here. And then back over in Arduino, if you select preferences, and go down here to where board managers is. I've already got mine pasted in, but you can paste that right in there and click on OK. Now, once you do this, you'll have access to Adafruit boards. If you scroll further down on that web page that I was at, you can see that you're advised to go into the board manager, which is inside of tools and board, and then make sure that you've installed Adafruit AVR boards. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And I've actually got that set up already. But again, if you go to tools, and then boards, and then board ma boards manager here, for type, select contributed, and then you should see right up near the top Adafruit AVR boards. And if you hover over on the right hand side of that rectangle, there should be an install button. Now you should be able to go underneath tools and select boards. And if you scroll down, you should be able to find the Adafruit Flora, and that's the board that we're going to be using. So you want to select that. You also want to go back into tools and you want to select port, and then make sure that you select the option down here that says USB modem. That'll allow us to communicate with our Flora. Make sure that you're plugged in, 
then you can click on check to make sure that your sketch is working. And once it looks like everything is working, you can look at the serial monitor down below. Then you can check this upload button here. That's the arrow pointing to the right. That'll load the code up onto your floor and we're ready to try things out with the app. Now, the first time you launch your app, you'll want to find your Adafruit device and then click on connect. The very first time you do this, you'll almost certainly need a software update. So select go to update, click the first option at the very top of the list. And then when you're asked to install a firmware, click OK. It'll take a little while to do the installation, then click OK when you're done. You'll probably have to go back and reconnect to your device, but now the software is all up to date. When you reconnect to the Bluefruit device, you should see a little blue light showing up on the Bluefruit module. Now select controller, select color picker, and let's choose some colors. I'm going to click blue on the wheel and then click the send selected color button. And we should see the LED lights up. I'm going to do the same for red. I'm going to do the same for yellow, although it shows up a little greenish. And I'm going to do it for green too. It shows a little aqua here. But now that we know that our software is working and our floor and our blue fruit module are working, we're ready to wire up the tie. So if you've got this part wired up, let me show you what the wiring diagram is going to look like, but don't wire it up yet. The color scheme I, I chose here for the wires was just to match my tie. So you need power, signal, and ground in all of your electronics project. We've got our power is white, our signal is green, and our ground is black. So we're going to start off by running our signal from pin 6, which is what I've programmed in the Arduino code, to the inbound arrow on the NeoPixel light. We're going to run ground to negative and we're going to run power to positive. Now you can see these green signal wires always go into the in pointing arrow, the arrow that points toward the light. And then there's an opposite pad where the green signal wire, another green signal wire will go out from that pad and then into the next NeoPixel all the way until we get to the last one. There is no outbound green wire in the very last NeoPixel. Now, if you take a look at the ground wire and the power wire, they have the same pattern. So the ground actually has both the inbound and the outbound wire sharing the same negative pad. It's the same thing happening for the power wire with the positive pad or the plus pad. With the exception of the first NeoPixel, it's actually got three wires attached to it. One coming from the flora, one going to the second NeoPixel from the first, and also this other wire goes from the first NeoPixel. It'll go all the way to the last NeoPixel. And the reason why we do that is in case we have a short and the interior wires here, it's not going to shut off the power of any of the NeoPixels behind it. So it's sort of a redundancy that we've got. So now that you understand the wiring diagram, let me show you how we need to weave this in and out of the tie. So next up, we're going to perform some surgery on the tie. You can see here's my tie. It actually has some wiring in it. But what you'll want to do is you'll want to um, move this small tail piece of the tie out of the way. And you'll find that there's just a small piece of thread that's joining this left side and this right side on the back of your tie. So just slit that little piece of thread so that you can open up your tie and access it on the inside. Now, you'll also notice that there's this white piece of felt, which sort of gives the tie some shape. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut a bunch of holes for our wiring to go from our CPX and then after we do the holes, I have six in my tie, but I'm only showing you four here. We're also going to cut holes in the tie itself, in the silk of the tie. I'm not showing it centered here, but you definitely want to make sure that you're centered and that these things line up. Now, these holes that you see here, and again, even though I'm only showing four, I used six in my tie. So you'll want to measure those out and make sure they're nice and centered. These ones in the silk is where the grommet is going to go through. So the grommet doesn't go through the white part. Another video over here on the right hand side shows the assembled tie. I just have it here so you can see what things are going to look like after the grommet is in and after the wiring is all done. Now, when you see the grommet, you'll see one has this sort of long tunnel piece that goes on the outside. So that's where people can actually see the tie. And this um, piece that doesn't have the tunnel piece that actually goes on the inside. That's what people won't be able to see. Now, depending on the grommets that you purchased, it may have come with a tool where you can just tap and it will automatically cut a circle which is perfectly sized for the grommet. If not, and mine didn't come with one of those tools, what you could do is just sort of very gently uh, clip a little starfish pattern and then um, spread the wings of the starfish back. And what that'll do is it'll make it so that you don't bunch up the tie. If you don't make that starfish pattern and you just do a little slit, um, you might find that things bunch a little bit too much around the grommet. Now, once you have the grommet set in place, follow the instructions that came with the grommets. What I did was I just squeezed the two sides together using a pair of pliers. You may have a special grommet tool which came with your grommets, but you'll want to make sure that you've got your grommets in all of the holes of your tie in the silk part before you do your wiring. 
So now here's how the wiring is going to go. So your flora will uh, eventually be inside of the tie, so you can position it over here along with the blue fruit module, which should be wired and soldered up. Now what we're going to do is we are going to run three wires. So the green wire is going to go from the number six pad, because that's what I programmed in the Arduino sketch. It's going to go through the back of this tie shaping white cloth, then out the front and then through the back of the tie where remember you have your grommets in here and then out the front of the tie and then what you're going to do is is wire this green up to the inbound arrow down here this is your signal wire here you're going to strip the wire here and you're going to solder that in now notice we've also got the black wire coming from the ground it's going the same way through the back of the white material then uh, through the back of the grommet and then out the front now don't wire this up yet but you can see the pattern that we've got here and we're going to do over here the 3.3 volt is where our power wire which is the white wire here um, again it flows the same way now before we do the final wiring up of the black wire and the white wire we're going to work with um, two more black wires and two more white wires one black wire is going to be the one that provides the kind of back channel in case we get a short here we're not going to lose power on anything that's behind the short we're going to do the same thing with a white wire so you can see we've got another white wire going all the way up here and you can just leave these wires up here dangling for now and now we also have a black wire which is going to end up going into this next NeoPixel but for now you can just leave it loose make sure that you cut um, just you give yourself enough room so that you'll be able to snake the wire through these holes at some point we also have a white wire which is going to do the same thing so you can see this is also going to snake through this hole and eventually get to this NeoPixel and then we've got the um, green signal wire which is going outbound here and it doesn't share the terminal the green wires don't share terminals at all so this guy goes out through the outward pointing arrow here and uh, we'll loop it out and we're eventually going to bring all three of these wires into this NeoPixel. Now when you're set here you can also strip the three black wires, strip the three green, um, white wires, and strip the green wire and then wrap them together around the appropriate terminal black on the negative um, a pad, I should say, uh, white for the positive, and then the green on the outbound here. And you want to solder them in. And once you're soldered in, you can actually try things out here with the Blue Fruit apps. And when you select a color, you should see that that color shows up on your first wired up NeoPixel. So now that we've got everything wired up and we've tested it, we want to go ahead and pull these wires through and do the same thing here. So you can see that we've got green, black, and white. And now we'll run a new black wire and white wire. Um, that are going to be coming out here. Again, we cut the wire here. We're going to strip them. We're going to wire these guys together. You can also see we've got our green here. These guys are also going to loop around here, and eventually they're going to go onto this third NeoPixel here. We're going to strip and solder these guys in. We can test again here, make sure, and we should see this light flash and this light flash, or at least turn on, I should say, if we use the color picker and we've already loaded up our sketch. Um, we're also going to uh, do the same thing that we did before, string the wires through. Also going to string these wires so that they're going to go um, eventually up to this very last NeoPixel here. We're going to strip the ends of these wires here, wind them together, solder them to the appropriate terminals here. We can test it out. We should see now that all three of these change colors. They should be flashing, but they'll change colors if you use the color picker. And then finally, we're going to pull the last bit of the wires through here. Um, and we're also going to pull the last bit of this black wire and the white wire that came from our very first NeoPixel light. And those uh, guys are going to share their terminals here. Now, we don't have any outbound green wire in the very last um, NeoPixel that we've got. So then we strip the wires, we wind them together, we solder them, we test things out, and you should see all of these NeoPixels changing color. So you've got everything wired up right now. And if you compare, uh, even though this looks a little gnarly here because we're going through the cloth, this wiring scheme is exactly the same as this wiring scheme that we've got here. Of course, I've got six here and I've only got four here, but the same patterns are repeated in the center here for the pixels and the same patterns on the end for these pixels here too. And just a few more things to show you in here. Uh, you'll notice that the NeoPixel that I've got in here is nice and flush with the grommet. And so this is where we use the E6000 super glue. We'll put a bead right around the edge. The tricky thing is that the grommet is exactly half an inch, which is the width of the NeoPixel itself. Now you might have some bumps or areas around the solder that add a little bit more width. These are perfect areas for you to attach to a bead of glue that you spread around the inside of the grommet but you don't want to push too hard because you actually might be able to push the NeoPixel straight through. When you glue on too, you want to make sure that you separate things enough because you don't want there to be any glue which is kind of getting through and it's going to glue on the wires back here or it's going to touch this white 
um, cloth in here. So you just try to separate everything as wide as you can when you do your gluing. Let it set for about 24 hours. Also, when you're back, you can see, I'm not sure if you can see in my tie here, but what I did to secure some of the wires in here was I looped them around and then I just attached a, a few pieces of threads and some stitches in here to keep my wires nice and flat. And I actually do that all the way up here in my tie. You can't see it because it actually sewed to the tie closed, but if you were to peel this back, you can see how I've looped these in and um, just try to make the wires a little bit neater and this will make my tie lie nice and flat. Now the last thing that I've done here as well, so that I can get in here, I have, um, uh, I didn't actually sew this, but it, I just put a safety pin in here. But you'll notice that I actually have another piece of white cloth. Now you can use any kind of synthetic material that you want, but I happen to have the exact same material that was inside of my tie. And what I did was I cut a shape so that it would act as a pocket in here. And um, I put a, a bead of glue all along the bottom here. I wanted to make sure that I had a little bit of space because there's some wires that are coming out the bottom going into this NeoPixel. Um, but I glued the side, the bottom, and then the side here. And this gives me a little pocket where I can push my electronics and my battery in. So that keeps that nice. There's a little bit of bulk to the, to the tie, but not too much. It, it, it um, is nice, especially when you kind of uh, you know flatten it out and let it hang for a little while. But that's our tie. Um, you can tell your students to download the Blue Fruit app and, and uh, they can have some fun changing the colors and the animations on a professor's tie. You also have to remind the students that um, only one student at a time can control the tie so they've got to shut down the app before somebody else can access it. Hope you like it, hope the project works out for you, and I'm sure you'll look geektacularly fashionable.